What's up everyone? Josh here with Ohio Fish Rescue back with yet another video. We've got lots of things going on. We got to move a bunch of fish, but also I came up with another genius plan. I can't wait to share with you guys what that might be. All right, so first we've got to move some fish from quarantine and then we'll get into talking about my master genius plan that I think will be absolutely awesome. So want to know what you guys think, but let's get to it. All righty. Ruth, this is your big girl. <laughs> she's coming out of the 550. <laughs> and she's going into the population. Oh no. Not the general population. So uh, this, this tank went through some anti-hypericidic and then I dosed it with uh, potassium permanganate. So I'm confident with a quick uh, quarantine. I don't see no sickness on them, so she's getting moved. Let me show you how to net a fish. Now, he's the greatest fish keeper known to man. Someone taught him. But I taught him better than that. <laughs> Woohoo! Did you get that on camera? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. And broke the net. Gallons of water. <laughs> Swim free, sweetheart. Oh, she's bigger than some of ours. Yeah. All right. Now, tinfoil bars make good cleanup crews. So I know somewhere there's a problem. Toss her right in there. There you go. Now, that one should go in there and clean all the gunk off the bottom of the tank. Okay, while he's looking for the fish, look over here. See these lids here? These are all lids that we were missing from the Bellagio tanks that our good buddy Bob, he went together and got, he cut holes in the top and the pieces of acrylic had this piece missing. So he put a cover on here. So now these can all be the covers we were missing on here. We just need you, Brittany, to take this paper off because I can't see. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Hey, this is a family show. You don't be swearing. I'm not swearing. I said, damn. Dang. I'm not swearing. <laughs> <laughs> He's biting the net, there you go. He's out. He's pretty. Yeah, he is. Alright, so now that this is uh, somewhat empty, we've got an iridescent shark, an alligator gar, some plecos, 
And then uh, these are actually gone. We've got five iridescent sharks in here left to get rid of. The trimax should be gone. And there's a bunch of flower horns down here that are left with some smaller plecos in that there as well. Those are all up for grabs and they will be, uh, shouldn't be here too much longer. But you guys remember my master plan of, you know, draining this, moving this, putting it next to here, taking this into the fish room or the pool room. Well, I don't think any of that should happen because I came up with yet a better plan that we don't have to move this tank or that tank or that tank or build a stand for, for this. And I think uh, this will be pretty awesome. But you guys are going to have to bear with me and uh, use your imagination. So this tank right here is an 8 by 5 And then we've got this tank here. This is a 265. So my initial thoughts, so we moved this 265 out to where all them coral pieces were on the floor that my dad put into the 180 for the saltwater tank. This can be set up against that wall. Now this tank will pretty much be out of here and this will be a big open void. Now, if we take this uh, 750 right here and we turn it sideways, that uh, 2200 right there is uh, six foot wide, plus the, the trim, plus the, these tanks here. Yeah, it's almost at our eight foot. So basically the 750 will start here and then go over five foot. Now, you'll basically be coming in right here, looking at the front face of this 750 right here. And now you'll have all this space open. You'll have the three foot left here in front of the, the tank That'll bring you up to here. And then this is probably a 30 inch walkway and then another 18 in in inches there. So you're probably looking at an another seven foot or so. Um, now we take that 600 gallon and we put it right here. So that'll be eight foot by four foot. It'll leave a three foot walkway in between the front face of the 750 and the front face of the six. Hundred. Now I think that'll be plenty because right now you're used to a 30 inch walk walkway and you come in here and you look at this tank or that one or this one up here. Now the only thing we would actually lose would be these three tiers right here. So for the time being we could uh, set it up on the end of the 650 or you know what just set them in the other room for right now. So when these tortoises go outside this three stack can actually come over and go bam right up against there and you can still open the the door have access to outside and then that uh 600 will be right here i think that is a genius plan and all we have to do is move this tank which is actually pretty easy i can do it with my myself and my dad if we had to and uh then we can just basically open up these doors bring that 600 in and then stick it right against that, that wall. We would, however, lose the, the, this shelf, but we can uh, figure out other places for this to go. There's so much storage underneath stands around here. We could, you know, take each one of the, these shelves, ones for, you know, uh, declor, ones for uh, testing, ones for anti-parasitic, fungal, and then antibacterial. We can put them in a tub underneath one bay of the stand. So I'm not too worried about this, and I'm not too worried about lo losing that there. But this would be a great opportunity to go ahead and bring that tank in. We're not losing no water volume, and we're only adding to it. So that is pretty awesome. You guys, a little update on this Royal. He's actually doing pretty good in this tank. Everyone's getting along. You guys had some doubts about the flathead cat. The flathead is actually in here and he is doing great. So everyone is getting along, that is awesome. Uh-oh, the Australian lungfish is eating, he can't get him over, that's a good sign. The puffer's also doing well in here. We would have to figure out a place for the puffer to go and the Australian lungfish. That's also not too much of a problem. So the Australian lung will probably uh, join someone else, maybe the tiger fish, maybe the dolphin, I don't know. 
but we can figure that out. That's not a huge problem at all. The only one is that puffer. We would have to figure out somewhere for her to go, but again, that is not a huge problem. But I do uh, like this idea. This gives us a lot more tank space, and I think it uh, uses our space very, very, I don't know what the word you want, want to use, diligently. There we go. So flip that sideways, and now you're looking at two tanks facing each other. And it wouldn't be hard to actually get it on to do our system. We could actually run a drain out of the back of the 600 over into the sump of the 2200, or maybe have it drain back to the 3000. That's something we'll fit figure out at yet another point in time. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. But my dad is working on getting this saltwater tank set up and going. As you can see, he's got the live rock in it. He's working on getting the filtration underneath of it going. Once this cycles, he can then move this whole reef tank over and then that'll be out the way. Can move the tanning bed and then start working on getting the Dwight Howard tank over. And hopefully by then, you know, the ground will be dried out a little bit and we can bring the thousand and get it set up right there. So very crazy plan, but it will work. So hope you guys enjoyed the, the, the video. If you guys want to see more crazy adventures with the Ohio Fish Rescue, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay fishy, my friend.